Hi, I'm Sarah from You Floral, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to make this beautiful baby's breath and flower arch that is perfect for your DIY wedding. So keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to do it step by step. So for supplies to make our arch, I'm gonna go with a flower only arch and I'm using this baby's breath. I've got terracotta carnations, got these white spray mums, and then I've also got these white roses. The mechanics I'm using to actually attach the flowers to the arch are chicken wire, and then I've got tin snips to cut the wire, I've got pruners to cut the flowers, and then I've got these zap straps here to attach the chicken wire to the arch. I picked up these zap straps just from the dollar store, they're also known as cable ties. One other thing I have here is this little container that I'm gonna fill with water and then I'm gonna put my flowers into these containers because when I'm using the chicken wire, I don't have a water source. So for my baby's breath, carnations and spray mums, that's okay because I'm making this close to the event, but roses, I don't want to have them outside of water. And so I'm gonna put them into these little containers of water and that way they'll stay hydrated. There's not a ton of space within this little water pick so you can't fill these and put your roses in them two days before because they'll drink up all the water, obviously. So that's what we need for supplies. And now let's get going and create. So I've got my chicken wire here and I'm going to cut it now using my tin snips. The chicken wire is going to form what's called an armature and that's going to be the structure that all the flowers are going to be nestled in so that they stay in place. Another option could be to use floral foam, but um, I'm just going to use chicken wire today to show you guys an alternative option to using floral foam. When I'm using chicken wire, there's obviously no water source. So like I showed you guys, you could use the little water picks or another option can actually be to take moss and put it inside of the chicken wire and then that will have some moisture within the moss. So I've got my little grid now of chicken wire and I need to roll it to create a cylinder. So chicken wire is a little bit pokey, so do this carefully and just roll it into a cylinder. So I, I'm taking a much larger piece of chicken wire that I actually need widthwise. But the reason why I have such a big piece is I want to have multiple points of contact for the flowers to nestle in. So if you've seen here, there's sort of a mishmash of a grid here, and that way the flowers have lots of points of contact so they're gonna stay in place. If I let this go, it's just gonna unspiral. So I'm taking the ends of the chicken wire and just folding them back in to tuck them in place to make sure that they don't go anywhere. I don't have a ton of pieces to grab with here. So to make sure I'm extra sure it's not going anywhere, I'm gonna take my zap straps and you use these for just taking them, looping them around, putting one end into the other and just pulling tight. Because if this falls apart, that will be terrible. So let's just reduce uncertainty in our lives and use some cable ties. So if you're having a hard time picturing how this is gonna look, just keep watching because it's actually gonna be pretty cool to see the transformation from a hunk of chicken wire into a beautiful arch arrangement. You can put as many cable ties as you want. I'm just gonna go with three. And then I wanna make sure to cut the ends of them because that will not look super pretty if I just have black ties just poking out. All right, we have got our cylinder here and it is ready to mount onto the arch. So I've got my cylinder here and I'm going to just kind of mold it which is nice about chicken wire because you can sort of move it around. I'm just going to mold it to the shape of my arch. I'm going to take my cable ties and loop it through the chicken wire and then onto the metal of the arch and we need to make sure this is super super snug because we do not want this escaping on us. I'm going to do a couple different points of contact here and then obviously cutting the cable ties once I'm done so that we don't see those black ties showing there. I've got three so far. I think I'll add a couple more just to make sure this is not going anywhere. All right, we have our 
chicken wire armature in place. Just testing it here to make sure it's nice and sturdy. And I'm going to start with my baby's breath now to fill it in. So the reason why I'm starting with baby's breath is it has the most volume to it. If I was using greenery, I'd start with that first. So uh, using baby's breath, it has a tendency to get a little bit tangled. So I'm just going to kind of give it a little bit of a pull to separate it out. And I'm not going to place these stem by stem because I'm looking to fill a lot of volume. So I'm just kind of separating them out. I've got four stems here. I'm going to give them a bit of a cut and then I'm going to go and just shove them into the chicken wire. So as you can see, the chicken wire actually holds it really well in place. When you're deciding how big of a chicken wire armature to make, keep in mind that your flowers actually extend out from the chicken wire. So this one here, you can see that my, chi my chicken wire is ending here, but once I shove in these, this baby's breath, I get a lot more length, like this is extending all the way now to here. So keep that in mind when you're doing the chicken wire, how large do you actually want your footprint to be of your arch? So I'm gonna keep adding in baby's breath, doing it in clumps and just interspersing it throughout my arch. I have flowers to add in as well, so I don't want to put in too much baby's breath because I need some negative space for the flowers to live in. I'm just going to keep adding in here. When I'm getting to the end here, I'm going to take my baby's breath and go the opposite side. I'm going to tuck this in a little bit to give myself a grid that I can shove into. And I'm going to take the baby's breath and work it through the grid of the chicken wire and give it a shove up. So you can see what I'm talking about chicken wire ends here, but my baby's breath actually ends here. So I've got quite a bit of a gap here. So I'm going to add in more baby's breath, but just doing it a little bit of a shorter stem length to kind of cover in that gap. So now I've got the shorter piece and the longer piece and the flowers that I'm adding in will fill in the gaps as well. So I've got two different types of baby's breath here, as you can tell. And so that's why I have staggered the way I've placed them. So that way it doesn't look as though I ran out halfway. I'm making it look intentional as I switch between the two varieties of the baby's breath. So I've got my baby's breath all set up here. You actually can't even see the chicken wire now that I've got the baby's breath all in there. And so now I'm gonna add in my flowers. So I'm gonna start with my terracotta carnations. So some of them like this guy here are not fully open. So to open them up, I'm just going to pull down some of the green sections of the, the green petals. And then you can actually just take your fingers and push them open to force them to be larger. So now my carnation is nice and big. So if you're doing this for the first time, you might want to kind of figure out where you want them to go before you cut because you can cut them shorter, but you cannot make them regrow. So I'm just going to kind of size up where I want these to go. And when I'm ready, cutting the ends at an angle, and I'm going to just shove the flowers into the chicken wire. I've got a lot of stems in there now with the baby's breath, so there's not a ton of space. So sometimes it takes a little bit of a shove to actually get those flowers in there. Some of these carnations are nice and open, but some of them aren't, and that's super common with carnations. They kind of take their sweet time opening up. So I'm gonna just stagger these throughout my chicken wire and just kind of deciding where it looks nice. And I'm gonna do all my carnations first, and then I'm going to come in with my other flowers next. But before I start really filling it in, I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do with the roses to help with their hydration. So these beautiful roses here, I do not want them to die on me prematurely. So I have these little water picks. I'm gonna fill them full of water. Decide how long I want my stems to be. And then I'm going to take the rose and shove it in like so. So now it's in the water. And now I can place my rose 
in here. I cut it too long, so you have to resize it. But now it's in the chicken wire and now it will not die from lack of hydration. So I could put these on all of the flowers, but I'm not really so worried about the carnations or the spray mums. It's really the roses that are finicky. Um, I would also stay away from th putting things in your arch that are known to be really water dependent. So an example of this would be hydrangea. I mean, the word hydrangea kind of gives you a hint that they like hydration. So I would definitely not put a hydrangea in a chicken wire arch because I'd just be worried about it wilting. So I'm going to keep doing this, adding in my carnations and roses and uh, keep watching to see how I do it. So here we go. I have finished this arch. I actually decided not to use the spray mums that I just went with the roses. Um, in terms of how much baby's breath I put in here, I use 50 stems and then I use terracotta carnations. I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 terracotta carnations and two, four, six, eight roses. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea in terms of how many you need to make something like this. Um, because there's no water source, remember that you need to make this close to the event. I have my roses though in the water picks to help with the hydration aspect of it. Baby's breath is so resilient that you could make this, the baby's breath part of it, the day before would be totally fine or even two days before, but I would try to put your flowers in as close as you can to the event. So hopefully you guys enjoyed learning about this and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.